Hi all, and welcome back. This is Darren from MRT. So this week's interview is going to be with Ron Kleiss of Mine Mount Models. So this is interview number four in the Craftsman's Courtyard online Facebook page series. So without further ado, let's get started. Welcome aboard uh, Ron Klaus, or Kleiss I should say, and thanks for taking the time for taking away from your evening and your family to, to talk to me at Model Railroad Techniques here. Um, for information we can find, Ron and his lovely kits on www.mindmountmodels.com. He can also be found on his Facebook page and Instagram account, if I'm correct, at mindmountmodels.com. So, as I said, Ron, welcome aboard. And so, the first question I'm, I'd like to, to delve into with you would be, tell us a little bit about your modelling background. Well, just like most people, I started out with the, the train around the tree and gradually grew from there. Um, had a surprise uh, layout, a four by six layout, in which I, you know, learned how to do the basic scenery as a, a young teenager. And then um, I got the opportunity to build a pretty decent sized layout for a, uh, for a teenager. It was about 10 foot square. And that's where I really... Uh, learned all my techniques of, of scenery and, and scratch building, um, small, you know, board on board buildings and, um, you know, all the, just any, I was doing aircraft models at the time. I was doing, uh, car models, a lot of model railroading, um, kit building, bashing and scratch building all in one. Um, that was all in HO scale. Uh, as I got a little older, um, I got into music and, and cars and a whole deal and stuff, but model railroading was, sure. was always there. And, you know, I just, uh, I had N scale, small layouts and now I've ventured into larger layouts in my house now in the basement. I have a, about a 14 by 15 foot dual gauge HO, HO N3, uh, right. and also a, a sectional layout that is, um, a, zero compression um, sectional layout that's a, a little branch line that is in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. Sure. Yep, yep. Um, and it's about a quarter mile long, and on that quarter mile is about 12 industries. And I, I took a picture of, of like Google Maps sure. and uh, the Sanborn Maps, and I basically printed out full HO scale. I based the layout on that. So I'm going to have all the buildings and stuff exactly the way they were. And probably I'm going to base it around the, the fifties or sixties era. Oh, um, lovely. Yeah. And it's a zero compression. So it, it, it'll be neat. One end I'll, I'll have an adapter that'll go to either uh Fremo or I can, if it's just freestanding by itself, um, I'll have a little, um, staging yard where you sure. can feed into this branch line. And then, uh, about, Two and a half years ago, I got into uh, start my own company, My Mount Models, and uh, from there, it's it's gone crazy. Yeah, excellent. So, well, obviously, one thing I gleaned from your website, um, quote me if I'm wrong, Kleiss is a is German heritage or European heritage at least. So uh, it's based, yeah, based yeah. in Germany. Yep. Yeah. So obviously, I'm predominantly a European modeler, and I'll explain why. I got into American crafts and kits, if you want to know. So, but uh, obviously you had a, a Marklin HO layout. Um, so, can you tell us a little bit about that back in the day? That was actually that was a layout that I did for a client. Right. I okay. guess it was about ten years ago now. Yeah. Um, he got in contact with me through my day job, and I was just did a few layouts for some other um, clients beforehand. And so I was talking with him. He would come in, into the hardware store that I manage. And um, he said, oh, I heard you're in the model railroading stuff, so we got talking. And uh, he said, oh, I, I do all Markland German um, trains. And I was like, oh, cool. So he, he was just, when he reached out to me, he was just starting to build a layout. And uh, from there, it's, it's pretty neat. I came up with a plan and an idea, and he liked all of the features and stuff that I included. And we worked on building a, a layout for him. So it wasn't technically mine, but... <laughs> I had a lot of fun building it. It's yeah. really nice. That Markland stuff is beautiful and oh, it runs it great. It is lovely. Uh, it's also got that, that third rail, but we're not here to talk about Markland. We're here to talk about mine mount models at this point in time. So, um, yeah, as I said, I'm predominantly a European builder. 
So that's great. Uh, I've sort of been picking and choosing, and obviously, mind mount models is one definite that came up that I think can come across quite nightly, nicely into into my European modelling. So just with some colourings, I'm I'm a little bit of a a freelance modeler in in that if I like the look of it, it will go on my layout type of thing. So. I'm not sort of too uh, discriminatory about what I put on my layout, so to speak. So That's cool. I appreciate it. So I'm assuming the name Mind Mount Models, or sorry, Mind Mount, at least came from, because your your layout is called Mind Mount and Seaside Railroad. Is that correct? Yep. Well, Mind Mount is the road that I live on now. Right. And Seaside is the road that I grew up on as a kid. And that's right. still where my mom lives okay. so i originally had the layout years before i had the company yeah and when i was mulling around for a name for the company i'm like you know what i like my mount models yeah. um so i was i couldn't call it 3m because there's you know the tiny little company that uh you know makes <laughs> tape and other yeah oh yeah they they i think some copyright infringement might come into play so yeah. i couldn't do 3m but my mount models works yeah. well yeah, it does it's a it's a lovely, lovely website, that's for sure. So, all right, let's, we'll, we'll dive straight into mind map models. So, what we're going to look at doing here is coming across. All right, so we're now looking at obviously into your website now. All right, so your mission statement, um, and this obviously follows right the way through your Facebook, and it, it you know you you follow it quite closely, I think. So, in your mission statement, you talk about easy to assemble kits on predominantly um, timeless designs that will enhance any model railroad and diorama so I think that's as I said you, you seem to you know right the way through you start with kits like uh, Skip's Bait House I think is one of them and the motor car house I think are a little more directed at modelers like myself sort of the the, the beginner craftsman and obviously we, we you work through to obviously Powers's plumbing that is quite so that's about, a neat one. Yeah, so <laughs> it's, it's probably it's, a lot harder to to to, to build. So, um, so can you talk us through your thought of how how you sort of came up with that mission and and then moving forward with uh, your models to come? Yeah. Um, well, when I first started the company, I wanted to start with something small so that I could actually get used to it. Uh, laser cutting was new to me, and AutoCAD I had some experience with, but you know it wasn't something I was doing every day. So. Um, I had to, I figured, why jump into some gigantic structure and I might not even enjoy what I'm doing here. So I started small with, with skips and it works out well because it's a nice kit that even the beginner, somebody that's never done a, a craftsman structure kit, uh, can do in probably just a few evenings. Uh, it's a simple four wall structure that you can actually add a, a dormer onto and rearrange a little bit if you wanted to. Um, and that's how I cut my teeth in the Craftsman Structure Kit Company, was with with skips, and then um, that actually worked well for a uh, about a month ago. There was a uh, an NMRA uh, meet, like a divisional meet, and they asked me to introduce their members to Craftsman Structure Kits because a lot of people, for some reason, they're intimidated when you say Craftsman Structure Kits. They think it's a box of sticks. Um, that you have to glue every board together. And nowadays with the laser cut and the, and the you know, pre-made clapboard siding and all that stuff, it actually is cool. very similar to putting together a plastic kit. Yeah. Um, and just, you know, a little bit different glue instead of using a, a, a CA glue or a you know, plastic glue, you just use wood glue for most of it. Hmm. Um, that's the main difference. Same, similar paints and sim similar building techniques, similar tools. Uh, and that's how I ended up going with skips. That was basically me starting out and learning the process. And now a lot of people use that kit as a, yeah. a, a jumping point to learn how to build the kits. Then I moved on to um, a little bit bigger kit, not much, but uh, the motor car shed. And that went fairly well. And that's a, it's a neat little kit that you can pretty much fit into any, any yard area on the railroad. Um, and then, uh, I was like, all right, I'm going to go big. So I ended up doing the Paulser's plumbing. That took a considerable amount of time um, to design. 
a lot more than just a four-sided wall. Uh, yeah, the roof yeah. angles were exceptionally uh, challenging, yes, I but uh, that, I managed. Yeah. <laughs> they were they were a fun challenge to to figure out, but I think that really is the character of the building. Sure, sure. Um, then I cut back the scale a little bit, uh, and I did the Randys, and that's a little bit more challenging of a a structure. Um, it's a medium-sized building, but that's what my most popular kit to date right now. Oh, okay. Um, cool. yeah. It's a good price point, and it's a it's a neat you know building that can be used for a lot of different things. But sure. um, and then my newest kit uh, that's out now is the Sunrise. Yep. Um, that's a warehouse building which can be used for a lot of different things, uh, and that has quite a bit of character. I base m most of my structures on um, some of it is straight from my head imagination. Uh, some of it is buildings that are in my hometown or in the general region. Um, like the sunrise is actually something that it's a building that's down the street from my work. Uh, it was a car de detail shop and also a building that I saw on a video game that my son was playing. Oh, wow. uh, okay. So I kind of, I'm, you know, I kind of mashed those two together and I came up with sunrise. So sunrise was your fifth kit in the, that you designed. Is that correct? In, in my series. Yeah. Yep. And yeah, pretty sure. soon coming out, coming out, uh, actually it'll be available in the next few days on the website uh, is going to be um, Tom's Top Dogs. It's going to be a hot dog hamburger stand, um, I've, I've kind of reminiscent that. of, of yeah. the 50s and stuff. Yeah. Um, I like the I way mean, you... I, Sorry, go on. No, it's just, it can go pretty much from like the 40s, 50s, all the way till now. Because yeah. um, there, there was a hot dog stand similar down the street from my uh, one apartment I had a few years ago. Sure. And it looks very similar to this. And every like Saturday, all the guys with the hot rods and stuff would come and park outside, and it was, pre it was pretty neat, real real neat look uh, to it. Oh, so that'll really... be available soon. Oh, lovely. So that's obviously yeah, that's one of the definitely one of the questions. I, I, I like your sense of humor in regards to how you put little teasers out there in regards to all these kits. So, in particular, the hot dog one. Um, you put up a, a Facebook post just whilst we're on that, last night. And I've got it up on your screen here. So it's basically just uh, you're looking at some drainage, but I do see distinctly in the background... A little of, fuzzy image of... A little fuzzy <laughs> image of the hot dog stand, because obviously yep. before that you did a... Let me scroll down here. Which obviously is the screen of all your weights and obviously the very distinct sort of tile line through the bricks there so I, as i said i think that's hilarious um the, i usually try and I'll, I'll do that i'll like zoom in on a corner of a building somehow yeah. and just kind of let people know sort of what's happening but they don't yeah. have a big idea of it sure just while we're on tom's i my my lad is he's a tom so i'll be definitely doing this <laughs> one it's hilarious so um I, I have seen a little bit of commentary around this because we'll, we'll talk about your um you know you've obviously been on AML network and the like, and a few people have put up just as well. You didn't put ketchup on that, uh, on the hot oh, dog, yeah, because you can't have ketchup apparently if you're over eight years of age, according to Lionel. So <laughs> that's true. So, um, but you did yep, say something well, about that there is a reverse side to it. So I think tongue in cheek that was uh, quite amusing. So yeah, I mean, you, you could take that little uh, squiggly line or that piece and paint it red if you want you to, could. if you want to pretend yeah. you're eight years old, that's, that's fine. Right. And maybe put it up on the uh, their Facebook page and see what uh, response you get. That would be my uh, my sense of humor. So as, I, as soon as they buy as soon as they buy the kit, they can paint it any way they want. That's right. That's right. <laughs> they can make it into a Kransky if that's what they want to do. So there you go. All right. Um, so what sort of price point are you looking at for Tom's Top Dogs? What what sort of are we looking at? That one's going to be that one's going to be fifty dollars American. Wow. U.S. Okay. dollars. So. A good price point. That's excellent. So, mm -hmm. what sort of sizes, like dimensions, are we looking at for for the the footprint of the building? Um, the diorama itself is eight inch by ten inch. The building is about four inches by six inches. Four by six. Okay, so it's yep. not a small. It's building, very similar. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, it's very similar to uh, Randy's. The same yeah. same okay. size. So it's not a small building. That's for sure. That's and at the fifty dollar price point, I think that's. Very reasonable. As I said, I'm waiting for the Australian dollar to get a bit stronger and not die, but it is right now to 
Let's start buying more of my American Everything's kit. diving right now. It is, isn't it? So it's <laughs> terrible. Anyway, we won't we won't delve into that. Let's nope. let's talk about the good stuff in our hobby right now. I think so. All right, so we'll go back to sun sunrise a little bit. So we are dancing around. So there's obviously a few things. Obviously, the fifth kit that we talked about. Now, obviously, the, the thing that stands out with me with this kit is the roof. Um, it's a, a like a shake shingle, which is for us Australians, we, we don't have shingled roofs. It's either tiled type roof or what we call colour bond or corrugated iron, I suppose. Um, and also like a yep. raised a raised seam metal roof. So yep. I suppose I'm, I'm very much into kits and Sunrise ticks a lot of boxes here, I think, is just the different medium you're using. So you've got the clapboard that sits the, the upper structure. You've got the, the brick structure underneath and then the, the batten and board for the, the loading dock building on the side so um and i think that yeah, that looks yeah that's lovely just the way all those different mediums all those different textures i think that's just that's hit the nail right in the head i think that kit that's 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 fantastic thank you yeah i, I was when i did this one i kind of wanted to put a, a bunch of different textures on there siding wise um i haven't done much of with the board and batten so I was like, you know what, that, that would work well for the side building. Um, I tried a new technique with the uh, engraving of the brick. The the bottom, the oh. first floor is brick with a stone foundation. Right. Uh, and that's all solid pieces, actually. That's all engraved on one piece, um, the four main walls. Sure. So the brick and the stone are actually done on like a masonite type of material. Oh. And that gets a real, that gets a real clean look to it, actually. Yeah, it can, it takes the engraving really well. I think I've seen some footage of that on your Facebook of that being produced on your laser. I think I think I reckon I, I did yes. see something on that. So, and that'll keep the Wiley boys happy because you've got foundations because they're all about the foundation, <laughs> as you know. So, oh yes, I, I only spoke to Brett the other day. He's his interviews coming in the two weeks time, I think. So, oh excellent. So, they're doing a great job, man. Those two yeah, guys are doing yeah, fantastic I, for well, our little uh, branch of the hobby. Yeah, I agree. I agree. So that's fantastic. I've sort of, as I said, I've sort of fallen in love with this this niche of the hobby because I, I, I think it's quite unique. Um, you, you touch on an interesting point just before about people have seemed to be scared of these these craftsman kits. Um, I'm, you, please tell me, I, as I said, I'm new to this, but I'm not quite sure why um some of them yeah you do open the box up and there's a there's a lot of bang for your buck in there um mind you i haven't the biggest kit i've built so far is a, a jeff grove kit um from pine valley so it's not a complicated kit i don't think but um fun nonetheless so yeah i, I can't quite understand why obviously some of the bigger i'd love to get into the powers kit um i'm sure you open that box up and it'll be a little more not overwhelming but more exciting i think to say oh okay we'll uh i'd love to delve into that so yeah i can't quite understand why yeah i think it it's has, just the intimidation factor yeah yeah the intimidation factor is i think from the original ones were all literally just pieces of wood and, and sticks and sure. and wasn't much um like a plastic kit at all everything was back in the day in the 70s and when when uh george Celios, and Campbell's and stuff like that. They were doing the kits originally. They were all individual pieces of wood, and you had to build the whole thing yourself. Yeah. Now with the lasers um, available and the materials that you can cut it on, uh, cut with it, are they kind of make it like a, a plastic kit, and it's a lot more familiar um, once people look at it and go, well, this is just like a plastic kit. Sure. Uh, it'll go together the same. Yeah. Um, and you, I think it when I paint, wood-based structures it takes the paints much better than when i'm working with plastic sure. it's to get the same type of, of look to it in a plastic kit um i can achieve it but uh it takes a little bit more work actually yeah. i find it a little easier to paint because uh it, the best way to to have wood look like wood is mm. to have it be wood <laughs> so yep. yeah as i said it doesn't intimidate me too much because i'm currently building a station building on mine and the building facade is it's three feet 
three feet long. I've got quite a large sort of layout that I'm building, so it's wow. three feet and it's um, 12 inches deep and about 18 inches high. So it's a rather large uh, railway station in Hamburg called the Damter Station. So And that comes in a box that's... Or two boxes because it's got its extension bit. Uh, a good part of a foot and a half square, two boxes full of detail parts. And it's... It's taken me about five years to build this thing, but it's oh, slow, moly. slowly getting there. So uh, on and off, obviously not all the time, but it's a sure. That's an intimidating kit. <laughs> that's, <laughs> that's an intimidating kit, but yeah, so excellent. So, I mean, I was literally about um, the first structure kit I ever uh, craftsman kit I did was from American Model Builders, um, and that was around two thousand seven or two thousand eight. So just over ten years. And I was intimidated. I won't say I wasn't. And I, for some reason, I was like, you know what? I, I like this look. It was a yard office type of thing for for a, a layout that my dad and I were building. And uh, so once I got it and I started building it, I was like, this isn't hard at all. There's nothing intimidating no. at all in this thing. No. Once you learn the different, you know, adhesives and stuff, and uh, it it's a breeze, really. Well, yeah, that's what a bit like what this kit's like, you know. And even though it's pure volume, it's enormous. But once you sort of break it down into its different components, and then you start sort of categorizing all the parts, it's it's a breeze, really. It's no different from building something that's only six inches square type thing. So it's just on a grand scale, obviously. But so yeah, like they say, it's uh, if you can you can eat a whale, just take it small bites at a time. That's right. <laughs> I like that. That's that's good. All right, so. Powers is plumbing. So that was obviously, as you pointed out, this is your largest and most detailed kit at this point in time. This is obviously definitely an one that I would I would love to build. It was a fun one. I a lot of people uh, the, uh, that have built it so far they they seem to enjoy it. Yeah. I, and what's really neat is the main building, the way I built it, uh, as you see on the website, it's a, an L shaped building. Sure. Now, um, Brett Wiley um, from HO Scale Customs Podcast, he decided to do it in the in the Z shape, the little zigzag shape to it, right. okay. um, and that turned out really well. I, okay. I knew it was a uh, you could do it that way. I didn't personally build it that way, but when as I was looking at the pieces, I'm like, you know, this could uh, technically be built into the zigzag Z shape, sure. uh, and it worked out well. Um, Another guy's building it. Uh, I'm not sure how far he's gotten so far. I think it's kind of he did all the main structure and stuff. Sure. Um, he did it similar into that Z shape, but the the center building, uh, I guess it, with the peaked roof, um, yeah. he actually cut the bottom first level out and actually made it almost like a drive through, where they oh, would get okay. into the and he kind of uh, the cars and, or trucks would get loaded underneath of that like overhang oh, okay. from the yeah so uh, that was really neat the way he actually ended up uh coming up with that idea i thought that was really neat looking yeah. um so i mean there's a lot of possibilities especially with kit bashing this thing yeah, I was gonna so say, far was a lot of people next logical question and just obviously <laughs> to, to kit bash that would be fantastic a lot of possibilities with it and i got a decent amount of um metal castings and stuff with it yeah. um uh, the let's see what else is available um, now the stairs that are, are there um, are available in a separate kit I have those on my web website now uh, there's jigs that, are, that make stairs and rafters um, easier to build now yeah. uh, as you see in that picture there you yeah. can see uh, you can hold your rafters or your joists or your stair stringers yeah. in line and uh, I, as I was designing the um, the decks for sunrise i'm sitting there going all right this is going to be a real pain to try and glue all these boards on mm -hmm. so i was like you know what i'm going to make a jig up for this i have yeah. all the the ability to do it with the laser so oh. then uh i made that as a separate uh, accessory jig um that you can do it now and uh, it makes rafter tails and and rafters joists yeah. building the stairs is a, a dream i remember trying to build stairs before and uh it's challenging without something like this to hold those, yeah, those I, triggers. I have some stairs to build, and I, I think I might talk off camera after this, and we'll, I will buy some. I think so. <laughs> I don't even want to try because I, I've done a, a three-step 
staircase or not even a staircase three step stairs and that was that was hard enough let alone doing something that's uh, half a dozen or a dozen stairs even up to up to a second floor so or even more so yeah this the sunrise has uh quite a few different stairs sure. uh and even has like a split level stair yeah so uh that it makes it much easier to build yeah yeah definitely So that's, I think it's quite interesting and it's, because a lot of these sort of not add-ons, but, you know, I'm showing the, the little jib crane here, or jib hoist, I should say, yep. um, that you sell separately. Um, I think that's a lovely little little side kit that you're, uh, you're selling there, purely because that can be just about used anywhere. Uh, dockside, down on the lower level, or even on a platform of a freight siding or something similar, I think. Sure. Just, obviously, yep. it's, a, it's a lovely little kit. That's uh, And it seems to be, you know, you're selling that, you're selling the the stairs um, with the railings, which is can and on, enhance uh, any kit, I think. And on Randy's, I uh, designed the uh, stockade fence, and I ended up sure. selling that separately too. That's a very popular one because um, you really don't see many stockade fences. No. I'll just bring that up quickly. Yeah. And for a price point of fifteen dollars for what's that, two twenty four yeah, inches about two, two feet. feet. Yeah. yeah, so sixty centimeters in my my part of the world. So so, <laughs> so that's all obviously on the laser as well. Laser Yes, cut. that's yeah. all laser cut, yep. Okay. So that's do you have to put the, the individual boards together or it's No, no, the way I designed one, it one piece. It's on like a uh, anyway, it's on a piece of wood where once you glue on the, the boards that are on the back of it, go, you go down a little bit farther and you can see uh, the smaller pictures on the back. You see the wood that you yeah. you glue onto the back to make the, the stringers of the fence. Oh, okay. You glue yeah. those on and then you cut it out of the... Oh, the, uh, I see. Yep, yep. The sprue. That's it, like a wood sprue, basically. Oh, okay, yeah. Um, and once you cut the, the individual boards out, they won't go anywhere now. Yeah. Okay. So it's all individual boards that are held in place on the sprue. Uh, you glue the boards on and cut it out, and then you have your right. fence ready to go. Okay. Yep. And then uh, with yeah, the nice. with the Randy's auto repair, you get uh, one piece of it, which is six inches. Six inches of it. Um, that's what I show in, in the little uh, display model. Yeah. But uh, in the separate accessory, you get the 24 inches of it. Yeah. Sure. And that's a very popular little kit little, that I have too. Yeah. So. With with that Randy's, that's neat. The the little sign that's on the roof. Yeah, that was um, one thing. That, yeah, can we talk a little bit about that? That's that's an eye catcher. That's um, yeah. actually my cousin Randy. Ever since I was young, he's an old. He's a few years older than I am. He's always been into muscle cars and hot rods and stuff like that, sure. and working on trucks and and so I when I decided to do a, an auto repair, I was like, I'm going to definitely do Randy's. And I got in touch with his wife and I said I needed to get a signature from Randy. Because right. I'm gonna, I need a sign. I'm making a, a model kit, and it's yep. gonna have a sign on the roof. Oh, so right. she ended up just having him sign this piece of paper and emailed it to me. So that's his <laughs> actual signature. Oh wow! Okay. That's up on that roof. Yeah. So the little backstory on your website here is that true to? Is that sort of just a little story, sort of fictitious, no. or is it actually sort of based around your cousin or your cousin? Yeah, your cousin's life. Yep. Let's say it's a proto freelance. Some of it's -freelance? what he did. Cool. <laughs> yeah, some of it's real life, and some of it I yeah. made up a little bit. Okay, and a little bit of tongue in cheek in there as well. Probably family, sure, and yep. giggles as well by the sounds of it. So that's funny. So, so that's probably a, a reasonable question. I think um, a lot of your kits are based around proto freelancing, as as you sort. Of, I think you sort of touched on it earlier on. Um, with some of your designs, or either driven past them, or something you've grown up, grown up with in uh, in your younger years, would that be a fair enough comment? Or absolutely, yep. Like I said, um, the only one that was pure my imagination was would have been the skips, because it was just a little uh, sketch that I did. There are a couple other ones that are going to be in the future that are going to be 100% my idea. Some of them are based on either a whole building that I saw or parts of a building, like the Randy's Auto Repair uh, was a old garage that I saw kind of like hidden in the woods. I was driving by one time and I caught my eye. I was like, oh my God, what's that back there? Cool. So I took a quick, a few pictures and a video and the original prototype 
garage was much bigger than that. It had like about three or three more bays on it. Sure. Uh, so I cut it down to make it a little bit more reasonable kit. And I did a little bit of adjustment to it and stuff. Yeah. And like I said, with the, the Paulser's plumbing, um, that one is based off of a building that's about two blocks from my house. And I would wow. drive by it all the time. Yeah. And I said, that's a really neat looking building. So it, in real life, it's a real estate office. Oh, okay. uh, in the past, it was like, in the past, before it was a real estate office, it was somebody's house a long yeah. time ago. It was, you know, a little warehouse type thing. And now it's a real estate office. Yeah. Okay. But uh, just seeing the roof lines and stuff of that one, I always thought that was pretty neat. Definitely. Definitely. So real estate office, do they, obviously the, the sort of the warehousing on the side of it wouldn't be used or it is used or? No, that's no. actually all office space. Um, oh, to make okay. it a little bit more railroady and warehousey, I did yeah. add some of the bigger doors. Sure. Uh, some of the stuff that's on the other side, you, you see a couple of railroad doors and stuff, and yeah. uh, that obviously is not there. Sure. Um, so like I said, it, the the main idea is from that that office, yeah. but uh, I kind of tweaked it a bit. A so lot of people you... really, in, I'm sorry, a lot of people really enjoy yeah. the uh, the shingles and the roof um, on on pausers and on sunrise sure. and um when they see the dioramas at some of the train shows that i've been to they're like oh my god did you do that all like um shingle by shingle i'm like no actually they're on long strips and they you stick them on with oh, double stick tape or glue or whatever sure. but my painting my painting technique is kind of what is the eye catcher mm -hmm. and uh everybody thinks i paint them individually and i actually do it in a um you leave them on the sheet and you kind of do almost like tiger stripes of the different colors. Sure. Um, yeah, you can see on my website, I have yep. uh, mind mount minutes they're called. Yeah. I'll bring that up quickly. And, so here we are. Yep. Yep. And I show the technique on how to do it. Um, on the Paulser's plumbing, it was just those four colors that you see sure. in the, uh, in the how to the mind mount minute. Yeah. And I just do long brush strokes sure. and kind of just randomly hit the, the shingles. So when you cut them out of the sheet and flip them around and start gluing them on, it looks like you totally brushed every yeah. single one of them individually. Using the pendulum painting method. Yeah, I just, yeah. I, because I kind of like swing it like a pendulum. Yeah, I yeah. just hold the tip of it and just wiggle it back and forth to get like the real light touch to it and just have the the tips of the bristles kind of hit the sure. the sheet of shingles. I did and a, you get a complete random look to yeah, it. Yeah, it's fantastic. I did a. I've only ever tried shingles once, and I it was an abomination. I ended up going with a corrugated iron reef. So I've since bought some, <laughs> and then I went hunting for techniques, and I actually came across this very mind mount minutes. So I will. I'm looking forward to trying that because it's doesn't look that difficult. It's, so it's much easier than it looks. Yeah, yeah. That's like one of the main questions at a train show is like, my God, how'd you do that roof? Yeah. And I said, no, no problem. You can do it even. Yeah. Uh, at that NMRA division meet last yeah. month that I had, sure. um, I was showing a, a young teenage boy. He must have been probably 13 or 14. He was there with his dad. Sure. And uh, I showed him how to do the painting technique, and it turned out great. He did a good job with it. So... It's quite a good segue that you've talked about that because that was the next thing on my list that I wanted to chat to you about. These uh, what do they call them? Mate and take. I'll just quickly bring it up on your uh, your Facebook site. So there's some photos up there now of uh, back in first of March before the world changed. But um, yep. is that in Australia these types of things are very unique. So uh, is it these what will you call clinics? Um, we don't do sit-down clinics like this. We might have conventions where someone will read a PowerPoint and they'll explain what they've done, but I think this goes to the next level, and I think it's something that can be probably implemented anywhere in the world, I think. Um, is it quite unique in your space as well, or uh, your part of the world, I should say, or is it something that is... Now, some of the divisions in the NMRA have done this before. Um, this is the first time in our division that, that they've done it. Uh, yeah. They wanted to have a, a make and take. Most of the time, the ones that I, the meets that I've been to, they'll, like you said, I, I do a PowerPoint and then they talk about it and you kind of look at what they did. Um, the feedback on this seemed to be really positive. Everybody was excited to actually do it. I had about 27 people doing it. So it was a, it was a full house, I guess you'd say. Yeah, um, a lot of people. And yeah, they, they, from what I heard from um, 
some of the division leaders and stuff, they were saying everybody really seemed to enjoy it. And then they were glad that they yeah. did it because instead of just sitting there watching and somebody talk about it, they were right. actually doing it themselves. Yeah, I had a short, yeah. real brief, basic PowerPoint to show the basic yeah. steps. And then, and then, um, then they went and did it and I would oh. walk around and answer any questions they had and, and show them different techniques that I, I come up with. Cause yeah. again, most of the, the 27 people, probably 23 of them never built a Christmas structure kit before. Yeah. And that's, it was just, yeah, it was skips oh, actually. Yep. Yeah. Everybody bought a yeah. skips and we worked on those. Oh, wow. that's a... And, uh, yep. So they, they didn't have time to do the whole thing. I, I knew that from the beginning. So I told them we're going to work on one or two walls, learn the basic bracing techniques, gluing techniques, what materials you're going to use, sure. get a feel for what the materials and the wood that you're working with. Cause most of them did plastic kits. Sure. And then, um, and then I, I was showing some of the painting techniques and stuff like that. And then they would take it home and finish it themselves. Yeah. Okay. So how, and I how... told him, if you have any questions, definitely email me, reach out to me. Yeah. How long did the, um, the clinic go for? Tom? Uh, the whole, the whole time it was probably three hours. So they had, so my clinic itself was about two hours of that. Okay. Maybe just over two hours because they had, you know, their, their quarterly chat from everybody, sure. the, the chairmans and stuff like that, of updates and what's happening. And then at the end they had a brief, um, like a word presentation. Uh, for people that earned certificates and stuff like that. Sure. So out of the three hours, just over three hours, they had, uh, I was about two hours of it. Wow. Okay. Fantastic. And it went well. I had my yeah. full display table set up. So you know, yeah. I sold some kits there and accessories. And, yeah. you know, everybody had a, it seemed like they had a great time. And then we had a really good lunch afterwards. Yeah. Are you looking at um, doing another one in the future? or? They already reached out to me and they wanted to, wanted to do another one. Probably maybe in a year's time or something like that yeah come up with some some other thing we could do they don't want to saturate it but no. it it put the seed out there for maybe somebody else to do something similar to this you know sure. maybe maybe it might be a decoder install or it might be how to yeah. weather maybe a, a freight car or a sure. train instead of just having that person talk about it have a basic you know box car or something like that and then yeah. show the techniques and have them try the techniques of weathering a box car or something like that sure, sure. As I said, that's as I said, we have conventions over here, and we that's basically like a being back at school. So I haven't been to one for a little while, but it's got if you, I, I, I'm very much for someone showing you how to do it, and then if you can physically do it that yourself, and it's very tactile, then and you can sort of play around, and it's a, it's a good way to a segue into this part of of the hobby. Um, and it, it sticks in your brain more when yeah, you're actually right. doing it yourself. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. So I've tried learning this via youtube that's how i've learned how to build my first so <laughs> built my first <laughs> craftsman kit but we'll get there we'll get there it's all, it's all a learning experience and it's a lot of fun i do so. have to do i do have to do uh some youtube videos sure um i do want to make a video of the mind mount minute that you're showing right now the the weathering the sure. um yep. shingles yeah i want to do a video of that actually yeah, that's and then idea. link it to yep. my website and just kind of hand it out there and just let yep. people see how to do it and see yep. how simple it is all right um, another one that seems to be, uh, they ask me how I do like my, um, asphalt or concrete, like the roads and roads and parking lots and stuff. And again, it's some technique that I kind of just came up and came up with and it's quick and easy. So I'll probably do a YouTube video of that. Um, even a, uh, maybe a, like a Facebook live type thing yeah. and just have people watch me doing it sure. and try and answer questions at the same time. I think you put something up about that just the other day, didn't you? Maybe even yesterday. Sure, I saw something about that. There we go. That's what you mean there, the, the car parking. No, oh, yeah, as yeah. I was, that's the display for the um, Tom's Top Dogs, the um, new one coming yeah. out. Sure. So as I was doing, I'm like, you know, let me just take a couple pictures of this step, and that's just how I do the striping for the parking uh, spaces. And I didn't actually see that another little teaser on the side there for the hot dog place there. Yep. <laughs> With the loading zone, what we call over here, loading zones. So yeah, that's like where the dumpster. There's going to be a little for the accessories that are going to be at this kit. Um, sure. It's going to be, it has picnic tables for the front, and in the back I designed a dumpster that you can yeah, kind cool. of fold up and glue together and stuff, all laser cut. Yeah, sure. um, and I'll make those separate available too on the website. So, I first heard about you on Model Rail Radio. Um, I came across Tom Barbelay's show, oh, 
probably nearly a year ago now because some of my modeling friends here in Australia or South Australia where I'm from um, Jim Gifford he says he sends his uh, says hello apparently he came in him and Rosalind came and stayed with you or visited you yep his friend yep yeah. Rosalind his friend came they yep. they stopped by it was great we um, drove around and saw a bunch of layouts together yeah uh, and then the following day they came by and saw my layout and I talked to them and, you know showed them around my yard and everything and yeah. that, it was it was really cool went out and yeah grabbed a bite to eat and they we they were doing like a whirlwind tour all over they started yeah. in california worked their way across the united states up in the oh. canada then um then jim continued over into europe and met his wife up there and then they kind of did some things all over in europe and finally made it back to australia after months i think it was yeah, uh, sure. boy some of the layouts i can't imagine some of the layouts that those two guys uh saw yeah of uh, um impressive it's quite interesting. Jim probably lives 30 or 40 minutes from my house. I've Jim's never, a great guy. I like never, him. Yeah. I've, I've communicated with him since getting involved with Model Rower Radio more than anything. Um, but I've met, met Roz before. I did a, another friend of them called a friend of theirs called Don, um, our local exhibition, which is in our in sort of mid-year in June. I helped out and Roz was there, and it's the first time... I've met them as well, and it was yeah, good good fun day. So obviously, a lot of good modelers in Australia. Yeah, oh, there's fantastic modelers. I'm, we're quite lucky here as well, definitely. So, so you're obviously involved with there's a a design contest. I think, oh, I reckon it's even tonight. It finishes thirty first. It it ends the thirty first. March thirty first so, is. <laughs> and obviously, your two of your kits obviously have to. Uh, be prominent on on this layout so how, how did you sort of get involved with tom i suppose you just a, a ring in like me where you literally do ring in and chat i i i got an iphone i guess in 2012 i think it's the first time i started figuring out even what a podcast was so i was sure. like oh podcast i wonder if they yeah. have model railroading type of stuff so the first one i found was model rail radio because there wasn't many at the time no. um and started listening to tom like well this guy just takes live calls so one night I was sitting there folding laundry in my room and uh, yeah. was listening to it in the background. I called in and just listening. And out of the blue, all of a sudden I hear Tom Barbley say, uh, Ron Clay, you there, Ron Clay? And I'm like, oh my gosh, I guess I'm going on live. So ever <laughs> since then, uh, it's it's broadened my horizon into how just how big model railroading is sure. and modeling and stuff. Um, he does a great interview. He he asks the right questions kind of encourages the people to talk and yeah. and and does a great job with the whole podcast thing yeah he does um and i i can't wait till every time a, a new one comes out yeah um and last year when we he did another uh layout contest it was a another shelf type layout smaller one sure. uh and he decided he wanted to make some prizes, so he involved my mount models because I was just starting out. Sure. Um, and he said, you know, he made some of the the kits at the time that were available the prizes. So when 2020 contest came around, he, sure. we decided to do some more kit prizes. Yeah. And now with this year, um, Larry Eggering of Creaky yeah. Chair Models, yeah. he got involved and his, he donated a a sound module. Yep. And uh, Ralph Renzetti is donating a weathering job for a, an engine. An engine, yep. So and Ralph yep. is uh, Ralph is a true yep. artist. He does yeah, amazing yeah. work. So yeah, you amazing. provide, oh yeah, you provide the the engine, and he, he's going to do as the for the winner. You get a a Ralph Renzetti masterpiece. Original, yeah. Yeah, it's, so there's some serious serious prizes this year. Yeah, definitely. So I'm looking forward to what what people come up with. Definitely. So. Yep, I'm excited to see him. <laughs> so yeah, I, I, as I said, I I've only called him twice, and I I do look forward to obviously when it when I can. Obviously, he's in San Francisco, but he is a an expat of Australia, particularly he I think he did grow up in here in Adelaide or Adelaide and um, Melbourne, which is the, one of our states eight hours east of of my location. So definitely a, a good good listen. That's for sure. That's for sure. Yep. Highly recommend it to anybody. Yeah. So I did put some, I posed it out there. And I did it a little bit late, unfortunately. Um, we've already spoken about Jim Gifford. He obviously, him, him and Rob's to, to say hi. 
um, which we've spoken about. Now, Scott Perry, I don't know if you know of Scott from HO Scale Customs. He's a patron over on that that um, okay, yep. Facebook page. I recognize his name. Yeah, so he, he's quite a modeler as well, but he's more into the larger scale, so he, that's his question. Um, is there any outlook for O-scale models for my mount models? Uh, yes, in the future. Um, when I was at Springfield, the big train show in Massachusetts, uh, this past January, I was talking with some O-scale guys. Uh, Terry Terrence reached out to me. He's a big O-scale king guy. And he's going to try and get some ideas from some of his friends and reach out and kind of go get a, a survey of what type of models they would like. Um, again, a lot of O-scalers, uh, they're kind of intimidated by the kit, even scenery by themselves, from my understanding. Um, and so he wants to kind of like broaden the, the O scale, uh, market for them. Sure. So I'm trying to get some ideas from him. It can't be too big a kit. Like I can't make a pausers in O scale no, because it would no, just be huge, be enormous. Yeah. but uh, I could, I could see definitely skips, um, the rail, the motor car shed, uh, even, um, even the kit that I'm doing now, uh, the hot dog stand and Randy's, they probably all make really good O scale kits. So I'm looking into that. I have a lot of people bugging me about N scale. Um, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it's so teeny tiny. Yeah. Uh, cutting bricks in uh, engraving bricks in N scale and stuff. It's, it's tough. I've yeah. tried it and it's tough because the, they're so close together, the yeah. lines that, um, it kind of almost gets blurred. Um, I would have to like kind of take some artistic freedom and make them make bricks a little bit bigger than scale bricks, yeah, just so yeah. they they look it, you know. Yeah. Like even in the uh, in the hot dog stand, Tom's top dogs, yeah. um, that is not brick; it's actually a center block that I, the building's oh, made out of. Okay. So I actually sized it to true center block in yeah. HO scale. Excellent. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So that's the end of the the train stuff now i came up with this little concept and i sort of touched on it when i sent you my email when you asked what sort of stuff we're going to talk about so it's somewhere between it's a little bit of tongue-in-cheek so if you want to if you don't it will go through it and if you want to edit it out that's fine i can i can do that so, <laughs> but i'm calling it the wiley's world of wisdom so it's just some random questions so you ready to do this let's go for it all right okay I'm trying to also trying to remember, obviously, the way we might say things in Australia and what things mean are very different. So I do apologize now. So what is your favorite pie condiment? Uh, pie? Um, yeah. Just the con, not the pie itself, but the condiment on yeah, top. Yeah, what, to, what do you like? You to, I'm going to have to go with whipped cream. Whipped cream. Okay. That's straightforward. Whipped cream. Well, Brett was uh, very much a traditionalist. He doesn't like anything on the top of his pies, but anyway. So that's um, more whipped cream for me. Yeah, well, that's exactly right. And he likes pumpkin, <laughs> I think, from me. So um, I see. I like apple. apple? Uh, I my like favorite. It. My favorite is carrot cake, but that's not a pie. Oh well, yeah. Well, so our, it doesn't our local, count. Our local bakery makes a very good carrot cake, so I'm, I'm with you on that. So um, steak or seafood? Oh boy, that's a tough one. Um, I'll lean towards steak, but I love okay. both. Okay, we do a a bit of a a mashup. We call it surf and turf here in Australia. So oh, yeah. you'll have you'll have steak, but then you'll have like skewers of either um, what we call calamari or squid. Uh, I don't know what yep. you call it. Your part of the world, or what's the both other ways? One? Yeah, um, shrimp and shrimp, which we call prawns. scallops. Yeah, yeah so um, Mexican. Uh, sorry, pizza or Mexican. Uh, I'll lean towards Mexican, actually. Good, good man. Uh, diet or full strength soda? Uh, it's rare I drink soda anymore, but it's got to be full strength. Full diet strength. is disgusting. Disgusting. Okay. Uh, favorite ice cream flavor? Um, I'll go with cookies and cream. Cookies and cream. Oh, you're a good man. <laughs> you're a good man. Our well, you know, our I, I like I like the chocolate mint, but yeah. cookies and cream. Our our um, I'm assuming they do it. You're part of it. Our McDonald's restaurants when they're open, um, make a a cookies and cream 
they call it a, a Mc, McFlurry. So it's almost oh, like, yep. yeah, so they mix the, the biscuit through the, almost like a thick shake. So that's very, very nice. So That's very similar to uh, Dairy Queen has their blizzards. Right. Okay. So you can get it like that with Oreos and like chocolate bits in it and whatever. Oh, nice, nice. Um, as you can see, there's a bit of a theme here of food, but we 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 get we move out of it. So favorite beer? Yingling beer out of uh, Pottsville, Pennsylvania. Lovely, lovely. Have you ridden in a police car before? Uh, yes, but it was voluntary. Voluntarily. <laughs> <laughs> police... Almost almost involuntarily, um, but I got uh, out of it. Oh, very good, very good. I'm a police officer, so that's hence why I've got that one in there. So, <laughs> um, favorite season of the year? I like who spring or fall. Um, I will lean towards spring. Spring. It's probably my favorite as well. So, you have freezing cold with snow. We have boiling hot in summer. So, but so <laughs> two extremes. Favorite animal? Dogs. Dogs. Good man. Good man. Oh. Yep, we got a great dog, uh, Piper. She's Piper. awesome. Yeah, it's cool. an Australian Labradoodle, actually. Oh wow, excellent! I got a an Outlaw German Shepherd. That was our our latest puppy. So, so what is your most unusual talent? Unusual talent. Um, guitar is not unusual. Um, I can kind of whistle two tones at the same time. I guess that's unusual. Instead of just one note, it kind of is like a low note and a high note. And I found out just a couple of weeks ago that my daughter can do the same thing. Well, there you go. <laughs> can you do it on, on camera? Uh, it doesn't come across on microphone, no. really. Okay, fair enough, fair enough. All right. Uh, what is the most useless model train product? Don't have to oh, name. Oh, boy. Yeah, there's a lot out there, but... <laughs> Useless model train product. Yeah. Hopefully none of my stuff. Oh, no, definitely not. <laughs> definitely not. Um, let me look around real quick. Something that I bought that I never used. Let's see. The old-fashioned couplers that you find on <laughs> that yes. aren't Katie couplers. Yes, yes I've got there a are... whole... A whole drawer full of those, just about a little. Yeah, little, like why do we, yeah. we take them off? Why do we even keep them? No, that's right. Just might need them one day. Okay. Yeah. And everything else might just need a that junk one, junk pile somewhere yeah. maybe scrapyard. That's a good one. I like that. Um, your favorite superhero? I liked Doctor Strange out of the yeah. the Marvel comics and stuff. I like yeah. Doctor Doctor Strange. He was pretty cool. Yeah. I mean, he could. He's one of the more powerful ones, actually. Sure. I bet he just recently got into the the whole Marvel, well, not the Marvel. Um, yeah, the uh, it is Marvel. Yeah. That side of things, yep. um, Guardians of the Galaxy and the like. So, really yep, enjoy it. And all obviously, Marvel. that and Black Panther are probably more too. I think so. Black Panther was good, yes. Yeah. So I'm a big, pay. big Star Wars guy. Oh, now you. My son, it. my son, and I love like Star Wars. So. Oh. We're actually very planning. Very excited for the. Um, very excited for the new Mandalorian coming out. Oh yes, yeah. We're actually planning a trip in september it probably won't go ahead now um that we one of the reasons why we're coming over and we're going to do florida um, disney uh, see the galaxy's edge so um, that looks pretty cool yeah so that's we're massive fans massive massive all the whole lot of us whole family so yes i like that okay if someone wrote a biography about you what would the title be my own god my own god can you explain? That's that's good. That's a that's a, a name that I used in the beginning of uh, the internet, and it just sure. kind of stuck. Um, it's not like religious based or anything. It's no. kind of based for the models because sure. I would have I would build my layouts, and I was kind of the god of that layout. So okay. yeah, I see. I was yeah. yeah. That's that's, good. that's kind of I had to come up with a handle for you know an email or like all these forums and stuff back in the sure. day. Sure. So I always would my handle would be my own god. Yeah, that's awesome. That's, I like that. So, now this is very, very, very tongue in cheek. How do I rate as an interviewer? <laughs> oh, you're exceptional. You're the best <laughs> oh, so far. Just man. don't let Lionel hear that. Yeah, no, no, no. I'd like to interview him one day, but I think he'd, he'd turn me in circles. It'd be quite interesting conversation. So, it might might turn into a uh, 
one of my interviews that I might do at work, we, we may say. So. <laughs> <laughs> it would somehow be turned around into an AML interview. Well, it probably would be, and that would be in ter- uh, very, very funny. I'd, li- I'd like to meet that man one day, definitely. So he, he's good. He's he's a good guy. Yeah, he's uh, entertaining. Sure. Actually, um, one of the other podcasts did um, did sort of like a dual interview, Lionel, and then um, uh, geez. Model, um, not model rail radio. Um, well, Tom did interview Lionel. That's actually how Lionel like, started the whole thing. Right. Um, and then there was Railcast, ra- uh, Railcast, model Railcast show. Sure. And they interviewed him, so they kind of both put out the same interview on both podcasts. It worked out well. Yeah. Okay. All right. Oh well, yeah, I would like to reach out to him one day, definitely, and see what we can do but i think he's a very busy man right now he's he's putting out a lot of content which is which is good so yep are you into telling jokes not really no. um i like them i always yeah. forget them okay they don't stick in my head i, I can't remember the jokes itself but I uh when ask I... the last one tell me a joke because that was that's the last one so <laughs> <laughs> brett brett uh, came up with a bad dad joke so he went online and went <laughs> got a bad dad joke so We'll leave, it at that. we'll leave it at that. So, all right, Ron Klaus of Mind Mate Metals. It's been a pleasure talking with you. We're coming up to nearly an hour. Most people so, so far have been telling, oh, you know, we might talk for fifteen or twenty minutes, and I think I've been kidding myself because there's so much to talk about, and we we could delve a lot deeper into individual kits and techniques and all that, and probably talk for days just about. So, um, thank you for spending your time with me away from your family to. To chat with me today it's obviously during the day over here night over there um i definitely look forward to building some of your kits um once the australian australian dollar stops crashing i'll definitely be uh, buying up some of the kits i think probably skips to start with i think so i'm building a little little seaside scene and then i reckon i'll jump straight into a powers which will be probably my biggest undertaking in regards to craftsman so far so thank you very much again uh ron um is there anything more that you'd like to say or no i just want to yeah. thank you for having me on it's been a pleasure thank you. Yeah. um everybody check out my mount um okay. you can actually sign up for our email blast i don't like bang have tons of emails every day sure. um it's just basically new product announcements and that i don't i won't uh spam you tons of time so um and keep an eye open on Facebook. Follow us on Facebook. Follow us on Instagram. So it's uh, you know Facebook, My Mount Models, or look us up My Mount Models or at My Mount Models on Instagram. Sure. Um, on Instagram, I usually do a little bit more behind the scenes stuff that you don't see on Facebook, uh, just to kind of keep it. Uh, I'm trying to grow the audience a little bit more on on Instagram. It's sure. a great platform. Yeah. And uh, we just got to get more model railroaders on there. Yeah. Sure. Definitely. So we'll stop recording there. So thanks again, uh, Ron. And we'll, no problem, Darren. Uh, I appreciate yeah, it. Cheers. Make sure you subscribe. Click that little bell icon to be notified of upcoming videos. Support us on Patreon. Like us on Facebook and Instagram at Model Railroad Techniques.